Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at some different types of sequence. So there's four main ones we're going to have a look at, and the first one is a linear or arithmetic sequence. This is uh, the most common one that you'll see uh, at high school, and it's the one that you usually find the nth term for. Uh, so what makes a linear or arithmetic sequence um, uh, special? If you look at the first difference, it always goes up or down by the same amount each time. So. If we have a look at this first one here, and I'm going to look at the first difference between each number. Between 2 and 5, the difference is 3. Between 5 and 8, the difference is 3. 8 and 11, it's 3. And 11 and 14, it's 3. Or maybe I should be a little bit more specific here and say plus 3 each time. Okay, so that sequence is going up by three uh, in 3s every single time. So it's definitely going to be a linear sequence, and that's how you can spot it. It's like the same thing here. If you didn't know what type of sequence it was, have a look at the first difference. would always be my starting point. So what is difference here? Minus 4, minus 4, and it keeps going. So again, that's your clue that it's a linear or arithmetic sequence. It goes up or down by the same amount every single time. Uh, the second type of sequence we're going to have a look at is a quadratic sequence. So for this one, we ignore the first difference. Well, not ignore it, but we look, we're looking at more specifically at the second difference. If the second difference goes up or down by the same amount, then the sequence is quadratic. So two examples here. So the first thing we'll do is work out the first difference, just like I did in these ones here. Uh, actually, uh, difference between 5 and 14 is 9. And between 14 and 29 is 15, then 21, and 27. So quite clearly, this isn't a linear sequence because these are all different. However, if we have a look at the second difference, so the difference between these guys, between 9 and 15 is 6, 15 and 21 is 6, and 21 and 27 is 6. So because the second difference is the same, this sequence here is going to be a quadratic. Exactly the same thing over here. Look at the first difference first. So the difference there is 6, then it's 10, then it's 14, then it's 18. So clearly not linear because these are all different. However, if I have a look at the second difference, 4, 4, and 4. So again, because the second difference is the same, definitely a quadratic sequence. Okay, so they're the two main ones that we tend to look at at high school. However, there's two others that you need to be aware of and be able to spot in an exam. So, give me a second to swap over. The next one I'm going to have a look at is a geometric sequence. Now, this is when you multiply. I've put divide here, but that's more to help you spot that it's a geometric sequence because you actually always multiply by the same amount each time. So I'll come on to what I mean by divide in a minute and we'll have a look at some examples. So geometric is when we're multiplying by the same amount each time. So if I look at these ones here, how do I go from three to six? I times by two. How do I go to from six to 12? Again, I times by two. I times by two and I times by two. So clearly a geometric because I'm doubling the number each time. This one here, again, it, you are sort of doubling, you know, 1, if you times it by 2, you do get 2, if you times that by 2, you do get 4, you times this by two, 4 by 2, you do get 8, however, that's minus 2 and that's minus 8, so it's slightly different, so don't be afraid by this, it just means that instead of times in by 2, we actually times by minus 2. And exactly the same thing here, we times by minus 2, and we times by minus 2. So 1 times minus 2 uh, gives us minus 2, minus 2 times minus 2, so a negative times a negative gets us a positive, and then 4 times minus 2 is obviously minus 8, so it's alternating between positive and negative numbers. So if you spoil it, it's times 2, but it's a negative like this, just think to yourself, could it be I'm um, times it by a negative? Just a little one to be aware of there. Now this one here is what I'm referring to when I say divide by. It's quite clearly dividing by 3 each time. 
Okay, each time dividing by three is getting three times smaller each time. But for a geometric sequence, we don't say divide, we always have to say we're timesing by something. So in this case, if oops, sorry, if you spot that it's dividing by three, what do you times by that does the same thing, where you times by a third. So every time here, we times by a third. Like so. Okay, every single time you times by a third. So although it's easy to spot that it's dividing by three, make sure if it's geometric and it's asking you what the rule is, you always then say it's times something. Okay. And the last sequence we're going to have a look at is a Fibonacci uh, type sequence. This is very famous. In fact, the, the actual sequence is over here. We're going to have a look at a couple of examples. And a Fibonacci sequence is when you add the previous two terms to get the next one. So if we look here, 2 add 1 gives us 3. 1 add 3 gives us 4. 3 add 4 gives us 7. So I'm just adding the previous two to get the uh, the next one. So for example, if I was to add another one there, I'll do 4, add 7, which of course would be 11, and so on. Next one, exactly the same thing. 1 add 4 is 5. 4 add 5 is 9. If I was to do the next one, 5 add 9, it would be 14. And as I said, this was the original, so 1 add 1 is 2, 1 add 2 is 3, 2 add 3 is 5, and if I was to carry on, 3 add 5 is 8, and then obviously 5 add 8 is 13, and so on and so forth. So that's a Fibonacci type sequence when you add the previous two to get the next term. Well, a question that could come up is something very similar to this. This is in uh, some of the textbooks, um, and similar questions have come up uh, before, where it tells you what type of sequence they want you to do, and they give you the first two terms, and then you've got to work out the next couple. In this particular case, we're going for three terms. So what you just do here is remember the rules for each one. So uh, arithmetic or linear, we're going up by the same amount. So I'm adding two here. So I just need to keep going, add another two. That'll give me six. Add another two. That'll give me eight. Add another two. That'll give me ten. Okay, so just remember the rule. Have a look at the first one. Well, the difference there is two. It's going up in twos. So keep the rule going. Quadratic. This is done on the second difference. Okay, so the first difference here is plus two. But obviously we don't know what the second difference could be. Now in this case, what they're after you to do is just to make one up. So if I made it up and said, okay, I'm gonna make the second difference four, then two, the difference is four, that should be six. And I can go backwards and say, okay, the next one there, four add six would be 10. And then I'd keep going. So if, uh, six, difference four, that would be 10. Then 10 add 10 would be 20. And again, one more, another difference of four. So that difference there would be 14. Then add 14, so that would be 34. So I've just made up a quadratic sequence. There's no real thing. You could have that as a 1, you could have it as a 2, you could have it as a 3, you could have whatever you want as a second difference, as long as you keep it consistent. And then obviously then you can generate your uh, quadratic sequence. Geometric, slightly easier. Remember it's timesing, so what do I times 2 by to get to 4? Well, I times by 2, so keep that rule going. Times by 2, so 4 times 2 is 8, times by 2, 16, and one more, because it wants three terms, so 32. And finally, the Fibonacci type sequence is when I'm adding the previous two to get the next one. So I'll add these two together to get six, then four add six is 10, and then finally six add 10 is 16. Okay, so it's just using the different types of sequences that you have uh, to, to generate your own sequence when you've got the starting point. So as long as you remember those rules, they're the four most common ones that do come up in the exam. As far as testing um, which sequence you've got, whether which, which one of the four, I would always test in the order that I've done them in. So I'd always test, is it linear? Is it quadratic? If it's none of those two, is it geometric? And then obviously test Fibonacci. You might have your own preference. That's purely mine. But as long as you remember the rules, hopefully you can spot which type you're dealing with. So hopefully that helps, guys. Thanks for watching.